I am by no means an expert in crocheting. I'm primarily self-taught. I had one great mentor right when I started to learn who taught me a lot of what I know, but I really learned the same way that you're learning by watching YouTube videos and practicing and trying new things. So today we're gonna to talk about the math behind crocheting a circle. And if you thought this was gonna be really hard math, like geometry or calculus, it's not. It's yarn, it's easy. This is how to crochet a flat circle. The math behind crocheting any circle perfectly. And by math, I mean easy math-ish concepts. This math is basic math, I promise, and it's going to give you that background information you need to create everything. Don't leave me just because I said math. When I first started to crochet, I could barely follow a pattern, let alone make up my own pattern. But that all changed for me about a year and a half ago when my water broke at 28 weeks with my last baby. And thankfully, I'll ruin the ending for you, thankfully everything turned out great. He is happy and healthy. I managed to stay on hospital bed rest for six weeks, 43 days. So he was born at 34 weeks and one day. We had almost a six week NICU stay and it was scary, but we're doing great. This was, I'm sure as you can imagine, a very frightening time for me and watching movies and reading books just did not keep my mind occupied enough to prevent me from dwelling on the fear that consumed me. I needed something else to keep my mind busy and that's where I turned to crafting, particularly crocheting. To me there is something very meditative about crocheting, sitting there with my hook and my yarn counting out my stitches. One, two, three, four. It had a way of keeping my mind focused and occupied on something other than the situation we were in. By the end of my stay in the high risk OB unit, I had crocheted an entire wardrobe for my preemie. And I'd kept my sanity in the process. So today I'm going to talk to you about some of the things I've learned in designing my own crochet patterns and some of the math behind crocheting a circle so that you can see how to make your own crochet patterns or how to adjust someone else's pattern, like mine. I'm always making things that are perfect for my house and super unique, but you might need to make a little bit of an adjustment to make it perfect for yours. But before we get started, make sure you hit the subscribe button on my channel and don't forget to hit that notification bell too. I come to you each week with new tutorials and tons of videos on tools and tips like this that will help you do all your DIY better. So let's get started talking about how a circle is made in a crochet project. So for the purposes of this conversation, I'm going to be using a double crochet. It's a nice easy stitch that everyone knows how to do. And if you don't, I'll show you that too. So here I have a circle that I've crocheted and I started this with a magic ring, which is the perfect way to start any kind of circle project. And then I've done 10 double crochets in that first round. For the second round, I've doubled the number of stitches. So I have 20 stitches in my second round. I started by chaining two and then doing two stitches in every stitch all the way around to get 20. Now, if you want a circle bigger than this, which you probably do, the answer is not just to keep doubling it. If you went from 10 to 20 to 40, you are going to be increasing at a rate that is a lot faster than this circle needs. So why can't you just keep doubling the number of stitches in each row to make a circle? So to show you, I have a smaller circle and then I have a much larger crocheted circle here. A circle is comprised of 360 degrees. So you go full circle, you go 360 degrees. When I have a small circle like this and I look at the circumference of the circle or, or what the length of this arc is all the way around, let's say this is four inches all the way around. That means I only have that four inches to get all 360 degrees into my circle. So my arc is gonna have a pretty distinctive arc. It is very rounded. So while this circle is two rounds of double crochets, this circle is six rounds of double crochets and it is still nice and flat and it has a nice even arc all the way around. Now when you have a circle this size, you still have that same 360 degrees to go. But now 
you have quite a lot more circumference to get that 360 degrees in. So what that means is the bigger and bigger you get, the more rows you add, the longer you have between each time where you need to add a stitch in to grow. So in the first row, I am doubling it to 20. But going from round two to round three, we're only increasing our stitches every other stitch. So we're going two in the first stitch, one in the second, two in the third stitch, one in the fourth. So that way we go from 20 stitches to 30 stitches. Now, if I had done too many stitches in each row, so let's say I went from 10 to 20 to 40 to 80, that's way too many, I'm going to start looking like this in my circle. So you can see that the ratio of stitches that I'm increasing in each round is way too many for this circle by the way that it is kind of buckling onto itself and has just way too much area around the outside to lay nice and flat, see? And if I did too few stitches, so instead of going from 10 to 20 to 30, like I know, let's say I did 10 to 15 to 25. So you can see here that it just is rounding up on itself already. It's not gonna lay flat. I don't have enough stitches in my secondary rounds. Now, good to know because if you're ever trying to design a pattern that has a horn shape or any kind of more conical shape to it, you know how to do it, right? You wanna design a pattern like you would a circle, but when you start increasing stitches as you go, you wanna make sure that you're not increasing it enough stitches to have it lay flat. You want to do less stitches each round as you go. So it makes sense, right? So as we're going here, if you're thinking, yeah, this does make sense, this math is easy, drop me a comment and let me know. Math is easy. So let's say you wanna make a little tiny crocheted bin to hold something on my desk. I want the bottom to be flat, so I wanna make sure that I grow it out flat all the way around. And then when I want to start growing it up, I just stop adding stitches all together and it grows straight up. It's perfect. But let's say I want it to grow, like I said, a horn shape by making a hat that's a triceratops and I wanna have a triceratops horn on it. Then I wanna make more of that conical shape. So I'm gonna start with my magic circle and let's say I'll do six double crochets, but instead of doubling it for that next row and going to 12, I wanna start making my cone right away. So I'll skip right to two double crochets in one, one in the next, two in the next, one in the next in the next, right? So I'm going to add less stitches a lot in a lot quicker rate if I'm trying to make a comb than if I'm trying to make a circle. And your constant in these patterns is that you're using the same yarn and you're using the same hook. So no matter what hook you're using or what yarn you're using, this equation should work for any pattern you're trying to make a circle. The only time you're really going to need to adjust it is if you switch to a different weight yarn in the middle or you're switching hooks for any reason, then you're going to need to watch and say like, if my yarn is a bigger size, I probably have to decrease the amount of stitches I'm adding as I grow. You've got this. This is easy math. Didn't I tell you this is easy? Do you have any projects you're working on or any skills you're trying to learn? Drop me a comment below what you're doing and I'll try to bring that same content to you next. And that's what I have for you today. I hope that these tips and some of the basic math and components behind crocheting that I gave you helped you understand really what goes into making any pattern that starts with a circle. I think for anything that you need to start in the round, you now have a little bit more background to make it your own. And if you liked what you saw today, don't forget to like this video too. It means a lot to me and it helps me know what you really wanna see more of. You can learn more about my bed rest and NICU journey or what I have come to term my DIY renaissance along with tutorials on the DIY projects that have kept me sane over on my website, Aloplum. I'll be back soon with a new tutorial, but until then, 